In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people, and welcome. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed. Today is Wednesday, the 15th of May, 2019. Thanks for joining us. The Church celebrates today the Feast of St. Isidore. Let us pray. Lord God, to whom belongs all creation and who call us to serve you by caring for the gifts that surround us, inspire us by the example of St. Isidore to share our food with the hungry and to work for the salvation of all people. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 24 to chapter 13, verse 5. The Gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 12, verses 44 to 50. I read from the Gospel. Jesus declared publicly, Whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. I have come into the world as light, to prevent anyone who believes in me from staying in the dark anymore. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them faithfully, it is not I who shall judge such a person, since I have come not to judge the world, but to save the world. Anyone who rejects me and refuses my words has his judge already. The word itself that I have spoken will be his judge on the last day. For I have not spoken of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commands mean eternal life. And therefore, what the Father has told me is what I speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us light up the world. Let us light up the world. Beloved in the Lord, on Monday this week, we highlighted the metaphoric language of Jesus. Jesus calls himself the bread of life, the good shepherd, the gate, the way, the truth. The life. Today, he says he is the light of the world. He has come to the world as the light. To understand this, we have to make a comparison of light and darkness to better appreciate Jesus as light of the world. Let us use two examples. In some parts of Africa, power cuts have become a normal day to day affair. In fact, People are rather surprised to find that there is electricity at given moments of the day because power cuts have become a habit. With no electricity, life is gloomy. Places seem dead. As soon as power returns, it comes and brings along joy and happiness. You need to see people rejoice when there is power supply. For those who have no experience of regular power cuts, Imagine the example of daybreak and nightfall. Imagine a dark room before you turn on the lights 
and the very room after the lights are turned on. Light brings brightness. It brings clear vision. Things hitherto hidden or covered by darkness are brought to clear sight by light. Jesus compares our world to the darkness of night or the absence of light. Again, it is metaphoric. The darkness here is not darkness as in darkness, but the sort of things that represent darkness. Lies telling. Cheating. Hate. Envy. Falsehood. Wars. Killings. All these things represent darkness and despair. So when we see all these things, then we are in darkness. There is no light. People are gloomy. People are sorrowful. Jesus is contrary to all this. He is light. It is represented by truth, honesty, love, peace, joy, forgiveness. When we live in communities where all these things exist, we find people with bright faces. There is light. There is hope. This is what Jesus means. He wants us then to illumine the darkness of our world, as it were, to bring the light, to turn it on. Let there be power supply. He wants us to represent what he represents. The good thing about light is, it has a very strong and positive effect. No matter how small it is, just little light, even from a cell phone screen, has the power to brighten an entire dark room. So never underrate the power of light in darkness. Jesus wants us to be the light, to light up our world. Do not say you are alone. Do not say you are unable. Do not say you are discouraged or afraid. Do not say it is difficult. You have tried and tried, but it's not going. Let your little light shine, and it can dispel the darkness of the night. Just you, alone, and your goodness can dispel the darkness of wherever you find yourself. Such was the darkness of the eastern night, the darkness of death and the tomb after Good Friday, the darkness of sorrow and despair that was dispelled by the Easter candle light. Picture that Easter night and remember how brightly the candle lights shone to dispel the darkness of the night. That is what Jesus expects of us. He wants us to light up our world by our good deeds, by our life of virtue, but how can we shine? How can we light up our dark world? From where do we tap our energy? Our source is Jesus and his word. We must be enlightened by his word. Then we later reflect the light we tapped from him and his word. God's word is a lamp for our steps and a light for our path. And so he says in the gospel, it is that word that will judge us. Because we ought to live according to that word. If we do not live according to his word, then we live in darkness. A solar panel is able to supply energy because it has first tapped from the sun, which is its source. So if you are not glued to your source, you cannot yourself reflect. Nemo dat quot non habit, meaning no one gives what he has not got. If you are yourself not a joyful person, you cannot give out joy. If you are yourself not a very peaceful person, you cannot give out peace. If you are yourself darkness, you cannot give out light. So Jesus wants us to come closer to his word because his word is light. And when we come closer to his word, we shall tap from that source, that rich source. And when we tap from that source, from his word and from himself, then we can be able to reflect that light to the world. Beloved, let us draw closer to Jesus and his word. Let us tap from that source of light so that we can in turn illumine the darkness of the world. Let us pray for that grace 
through the intercession of St. Isidore, that each one of us will become light to our darkened world. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>